Okay, so you want me to be a snitch. An anonymous snitch. <laughs> a secret I know about my friend? Maybe? Oh, this is a good one. So, how do I best put this? So, my friend had a girlfriend who, um, who was unfortunately shot and killed. You know, you're starting to make me question if I know anyone interesting at all. <laughs> exactly, I'm the weirdest one in existence. Maybe that's why I think everyone else is boring, because I, I set the bar too high. Man, if this wasn't VR chat, I wouldn't be getting so deep. I was sent to, uh, I was sent to a hospital because my therapist thought I was a danger to myself. It was state mandated by a judge that I was in emergency detainment for 72 hours. It was rough, man. He's gay, but he absolutely refuses to admit it. And it's not a secret because I, you know, it's fairly obvious and I try to like, listen, man, you're, you're gay. And that's not a, you know, that's not a negative against you or anything, but come on, let's face the facts. And he's like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. So to rewind back to like that whole like VR relationship thing, he is like super flirty with like one other particular guy on here that's also my friend and it's, it's just like guys just go get a room and you know because they're always like doing like the the head pats and the nose boops and the and the the pettings and the rubbings and all and all like the giggling and all that like school girls man like like we're in, like they're in middle school and these are grown-ass men i don't know man i don't like talking about other people because i like to discuss ideas instead and solutions discussing people will not get you anywhere man like i said i like to talk about ideas that can present solutions to people's problems but if you're discussing, oh, he did this, he did that, and then you're judging for it, it's not, it's not productive. It's not gonna get you anywhere. It's not nothing good uh, is gonna come out of it, neither for you or for that. Uh, in real life, I'm a very confident person, but I get very anxious with a large good group of people. I kind of feel like this inside, and I don't really want to talk. That's why I play music. Uh, what's your YouTube name? So you can probably like cut this out a little bit too. Go subscribe to Humans in VR. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> most of the things that are shared with me aren't secrets also like most of it's just kind of like hey i'm thoroughly depressed and i'm like i'm sorry to hear that i'm probably not the best person to talk to about this <laughs> i'm emotionally cold <laughs> um i don't know if it comes with being like autistic or like just not getting people's feelings or not being very much very expressive myself my intellect is tied to my feelings quite deeply like spock do you want a solution i can offer some solutions and most people are like no i just want to feel my feelings right now and you listen because i'm good listening i just i frequently offer solutions and that's not what people want hmm gosh a secret about somebody else but i'll be honest you know i tend to respect people's privacy when they're like i always know, like i don't pry information from people if they don't want to talk about things and stuff so we all used to be pretty good friends and this guy was totally head over heels for her. i mean everybody was right but maybe like a week before she ended up getting shot and killed she told me because you know we just met up and we were talking she was like hey i don't know how to cut things off with you know said friends and i I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I just don't like him anymore. And, you know, their relationship was like, you know, close, right? And it just, it just makes me think, because, you know, we both went to her funeral as well. It just makes me think, how different would things be if he had known that she was trying to cut things off with him? So I guess that's just kind of like a secret that I'm never going to tell him, because that just completely shatter his heart. You know, he still feels it like now. This was maybe a month ago. He still feels it now. So, yeah, that's probably the secret. <laughs> Most secrets that people give me that I carry for them, I automatically forget. That's why I'm such a good person to tell secrets to. So I really can't remember. It's not that I'm above telling you. I, I'm not. I'm, I'm a little gossipy, but I just, I really don't remember. There's a lot more time than you think there is. I know, like, I just turned 20, right? And I'm already having, like, a midlife crisis. But this is kind of something, like, a midlife crisis at, like, 20 years old. But, you know, what, like, what's the average lifespan now? Like, 80? That means you have 60, you, you know, you have 60 more years left. Like, you, I don't know. Things take time. Like, it takes time to do things. Like, I kind of feel, I don't know, a little, like, unsatisfied with where my life is now. But, like, in a year, like, my life's going to be completely different. I, just, I still feel a lot of, of guilt about the guy who I thought was my brother. Not by blood, but just as a close friend. And because of this, I've had a lot of hard times building connections with other people. And it was, I don't know, fuck, man. <laughs> VR chat something else. I don't know why I'm I'm telling a, a duck with kit tattoos this, but hey man, it's got it's got a lot deeper than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, what's your YouTube channel name? Oh damn, alright, I'll be sure to check it out. Thank you, duck. Hugs, hugs all around. 
I mean, I'll give you something, I guess, here as uh, I'm going to tie it back with like childhood friends and stuff. Okay. Growing up, finding out like, uh, you know, people have, you know, very different political standpoints and finding like some of my friends, uh, you know, hard standing opinions about things. Well, I don't necessarily agree with. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, what, you, if what you feel is correct, then, it, then that should be the case. And if not, well, then you're opening your mind to, you know, an alternative perspective and you should be willing to accept the idea that maybe something you believe isn't correct. I, uh, I, I use my chronic migraine as an excuse to get out of work uh, when I'm horribly hungover all the time. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been my get out of jail free card for, for quite a while. I, I've, I feel feelings. It's just they're very muted. I don't get very excited. I don't get very sad. Occasionally I get sad when like people around me are sad. I share. I have empathy. What's, what's the term? Sympathy is like I feel sad because you're sad, but empathy is I am with you with your feelings. Like I still feel things. Uh, it's not like I'm because Spock still felt things. Um, um, but frequently it feels like foreign. I'm not used to it. <laughs> My friends certainly are like, you, you've got something. We're all neuro, neuro uh, divergent in some way or shape or form. And like when I bring it up, people are like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like <laughs> best friend, known him for years, like since I was like five and i'm now like a full-grown adult. When I, when I was like, my dad was researching autism and going like, oh, you know, I've, I've probably got this thing, and my son's probably got this thing. That's interesting. I'll share this information with my son. <laughs> uh, and I was like, oh, cool. I don't know what changed. Like, I don't know. It was kind of late in the process. I had just finished high school when he started like researching this sort of thing. And he was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. It probably would have been helpful to know this. And my, bro my stepmom certainly would have liked to know these sorts of things just because we were constantly at butting heads with each other. Just from like communication standpoint, she sees things and I'm just incapable of seeing them. And she's like, why don't you understand? And I'm like, I don't know why I don't understand. <laughs> Um, near-death experience. I do combat sports, so near-death is kind of vague to me now, um, when you're being choked out and stuff like that. When, when you've been, like, when you're being choked out and, like, you know, boxing and stuff like that, all that fun stuff, near-death kind of gets a little bit blurred. And I guess it was kind of near-death, because, you know, I... I crash into another car doing like maybe 40 or 50. So maybe that could be considered near death. No, no, it affected me. Maybe not so much as like mortality, but more of like it made me look around at who I was around, like who I interacted with, who I considered my friends. And, and like, then I also looked at myself and was like, hey, that car you just crashed, it's expensive. And now you literally don't have a car to go to and from work to and from school. You know, you really, you really messed up. And it's like, you know, it wasn't so much me looking at mortality, but more of like looking and being like, my actions have major consequences. And it kind of also made me realize the value of a dollar even more. Because like I said, I'm early 20s. And it made me realize like, hey, a car is expensive. Sure, you've been handed stuff before and you're on your own now. You, you got to realize that stuff is expensive and this car you crashed, you're not just going to magically get a new one. If I were to think of something like that, I, I know somebody who is an anonymous poet who is super famous online. And I found that a lot of people really connect with their work. And they recently recently got off of the internet for a while because of their own personal life circumstances. Everyone is kind of wondering like where they are and if they're okay. Um, <laughs> I obviously know that they're fine, but just knowing that their work connected with a lot of people to the point where so many strangers really care about this person that I know and I'm close to, it, it's good and it touches my heart. Obviously out of privacy for them, I wouldn't tell anybody. I don't, not that I know of, but it's another thing, I, or at least that I associate with autism is like, I don't know most of those rules. <laughs> I was just kind of like, oh, that, that's, that's a social taboo. Why didn't anyone tell me? They're like, but you're supposed to know, like staring at people. Great example. My friends didn't know I was doing this, but I had like an intervention almost with like a bunch of friends while we were driving on a long car trip. They were all like, you know, oh, it makes us really uncomfortable. Like we're, we're all introverts. And you, like, have very bright blue eyes. And you, like, stare into our souls. 
<laughs> and it makes us very uncomfortable because like you stare and you just continue to stare. It's good. Like in, in my mind, I'm like, I'm making good eye contact. I, I'm looking at the person that I am talking to. Like it's good eye contact. You're supposed to do that. That's what I was taught. Like I thought, <laughs> but un- it turns out that makes people very uncomfortable as they like squirm under like my gaze. <laughs> I thought I had a system down like this is something like I had kind of taught myself because I when I had learned like oh don't stare I'm like okay well when when do you not stare I came up with a system because no one had complained up till that point where my friends all sat down with me is like okay I can look at them and then if I need to blink I look away and that's the time to like look around and like do whatever and then continue looking at them after that are you familiar with parasite the the anime in high school i had a few friends that like jokingly asked if i was a parasite because of my like mannerisms and how i like behaved just kind of like you seem kind of off but like you're still a person right (laughs) and i'm like yeah i i think so i was just kind of like i'm curious i asked lots of questions quite frequently not always appropriate questions oh that's a good example that's not like terrible i i would just kind of go up to someone who like looks upset and i would say why are you upset and people are like no no, don't talk to them they're like they're doing they're they're feeling things right now i'm like just uh, just awkward i'm just so awkward When I hear my friends talking like that don't know I'm autistic, like listing off the things of like what they like are irked by this other autistic person or like just kind of stereotypes. I'm just kind of like sitting there nodding like, yep, uh uh-huh, that's true too. Yep, uh, I'm just like that. And they're like, wait, what? And I'm like, no, you're describing me. Like, I mean, like maybe we haven't hung out enough or not or something, but like, (laughs) no, you're pretty accurate there. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. And like getting like flustered about like, listing the things about like me and i'm like no no like it's it's pretty true for a lot of those things (sighs) there's probably nicer ways to put it but (laughs) at least in my specific case there's quite a few like parallels with like at least what i've heard but there's also varying degrees of autism so it might not always be accurate for everyone kindness is contagious when you are kind you inspire others be the spark spreading kindness merchandise available now